You know, once upon a time, I was a live streamer and I had the complete streamer lifestyle too. Terrible sleeping habits. I racked up a massive bill on DoorDash. I did multiple 24 hour streams and I damaged a lot of good relationships with people that I cared about because unfortunately in the world of live streaming, you can't spend time with them because you gotta be streaming all the time. And while thankfully that chapter of my life is pretty much over, I still like to follow updates, you know, new tech and improvements for that vertical of gaming. And interestingly enough, cloud gaming platforms are coming out with some really cool ideas for streamers. Take Amazon Luna, for example. They offer the ability to stream games directly to Twitch via the cloud. And on top of that, they allow you to use your phone as a webcam when streaming to your television. And then you have Google, Google, whose cloud gaming platform Stadia offers you the ability to stream games directly to YouTube or capture gameplay footage at its highest resolution possible, completely eliminating the startup cost of things like a capture card. And for both of these platforms, these tools are awesome because they're lowering the bar of entry into becoming a live streamer. In the case of Google Stadia, all you need is a Gmail account and you can access their games and stream them to a YouTube channel. You don't need things like an expensive console or a gaming PC. And it doesn't seem like they're stopping there because last week, Google Stadia released two really nice quality of life improvements to their streaming tech that show a continued investment, not just to live streamers, but to their platform as well. And that first improvement for Stadia streaming tech affects streaming directly to YouTube because now players are allowed to switch games midstream without having to end the stream abruptly and then restart a new stream with a brand new game. And shout out to XDA developers for discovering this because while Stadia's new resume live stream feature may seem like a small change, in reality it means your streams will one, feel way more professional and two, you don't run the risk of losing members of your audience who in the time it took you to relaunch your stream discovered another video and are now watching that which i understand can kind of be like a little bit of a harsh take but in the reality of content creation that's the truth something ridiculous like 500 hours of videos are uploaded to youtube every minute so as you see, this new feature from Stadia is kind of a big W for streamers. Now, the second update to Stadia streaming tech doesn't really involve YouTube as much as it involves Stadia itself. And I completely understand that that sounds super confusing, so just let me explain. Last week, Stadia revealed a brand new feature called Party Stream, which takes Stadia's already existing party feature where up to 10 players can join a party chat and allows members of said party to view and share their gameplay with each other. And you might be wondering, why would I want to stream my gameplay to my party. And for me, the game that I see using this feature the most would be something like Jackbox, where only one person needs the license and the other nine members can play while just viewing the party stream. And I've also heard people pitch this for like eSports. You know, when you're broadcasting a, a, a tournament and one player goes down, you could switch the camera to the next player of the party so the stream isn't just looking at like a downed player. Now I did take the opportunity to try this feature out firsthand and it actually works pretty smoothly. Essentially, the party leader will host a party and then they can open their stadia menu and choose to share gameplay and within this same party menu you can see other players who are sharing gameplay and select to watch them there if a player is sharing you'll see an eyeball icon right next to their name and if they're not you'll see a prompt that says ask this player to start sharing now a big point worth making here is that if you are playing a game and you select to watch another player stream the game you're playing will close out. Admittedly, I really don't like this part of the feature because I would love to be able to jump back into my game once like it loads, but I assume this is probably like a bandwidth thing for Stadia and that's why they made it a thing. Another interesting point is that Stadia will keep a little tally on the top of your party stream to alert you how many people in the chat are actually watching you play. Anyway, like I said, really cool quality of life updates from Google and I do think that the next logical step for Google Stadia is to implement some type of webcam support, similar to the the way that Amazon Luna has already accomplished, which if you're interested in checking that out, I included a link to that video in the description down below. But another big step for Google would be to allow alerts and overlays. For the most part, none of the cloud gaming platforms who offer social integrations like this have implemented stuff like that. And I think it would not only be super fun, but overlays and alerts are kind of the bread and butter for a live streamer. But anyway, enough from me. What do you all think about these updates? Are you a streamer? Have you tried out Stadia Party Stream? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Hey, thanks again for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw and you want to see more content just like it, which who wouldn't, uh, hit the subscribe button right there. And while you're down there, hit the like button. Maybe even consider becoming a Nerf Report best friend. 
just like the people listed down below did. In fact, don't you want to see your name there? I know I do.